Jeffrey came in. I had been doing theater for 15 years before that with an ensemble company, and I thought this guy would fit right in with our with our company. He's crazy enough to uh, do quite well with us. Crazy, yes. <laughs> and I, of course, I had a, a a theater background too, so we sort of kind of clicked on that level. We sort of understood each other's uh, point of view. Although the thing I remember is that Jeffrey. Um, was not a horror movie fan. True, and, still do. <laughs> and there was one scene in it where he takes a bone saw and goes through a corpse with it, and it, and it, and it comes up with blood cover up to his elbow, and he shakes the blood off, and it's on camera, and it's completely real. That's Jeffrey. Let's just get this off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I came across a, a, a Poe a biography, and I read it, and I said to Stu, my God, I can't believe in, no one has ever told this story. He's America's Van Gogh. I, it's a tragic figure. And uh, Stu nodded and well, you know what, planted that seed. And well, it was interesting because at the same time, my daughter is a, an English teacher. She teaches high school English. And I, I, one time I read The Black Cat to her class and scared the living hell out of them. And uh, I thought, wow, this would make a good movie. <laughs> was the brilliant thing about the Black Cat on Masters of Horror was that they made Poe the protagonist in one of his own stories. From that, we started, we shot the Masters of Horror and during that, Stuart kept saying to me, my God, you should, you're the spitting image of him, you should do, you should do a, a one-man show. And yeah, I, it was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. extraordinary. It was, I, it was like, feel, I felt working on that show that I was hanging out with Edgar Allan Poe. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be wonderful to share that with an audience. We, in earnest, sort of said, okay, well, let's, what might that be that evening? Uh, and we decided it would be a recital, and Stu sort of came up with a, a specific sort of actual time in Poe's life where his wife had passed, and a year before he had died, and he's sort of in this desperate place. And he was constantly proposing marriage to you know, to all of these heiresses. Four. Yes, and uh, it, the one that we sort of focused on was uh, uh, Helen Whitman, who uh, ended up breaking off the engagement because of post drinking. I think it was actually Dennis Paoli, the, the, who, who wrote the, the script, who suggested oh. the idea that he should start drinking on stage. And that what happens then is that it really creates a tension with the audience. It's like, you know, at first it's funny, but after a while, you're going, please, don't take another drink. You know, it's, right. you're not going to be able to continue. So we do the show without an intermission. Uh, so it is a, a, a unstoppable sort of train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of think like Mark Twain tonight, only down the rabbit hole. <laughs> There's been some great reviews and articles about, you know, the play and about Jeffrey. and. Uh, what I am happy to see is that it, it's people are you know finally giving him the credit that he deserves, you know that uh, he is you know one of our greatest character actors and uh, for for that to become known and and, and, and uh, publicized is great. Yep, that's really good. Thanks. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no